All right, let's try it again. This thing is not allowing me, it's not allowing me today to operate, but I just want to say happy Saturday to everybody. I just want you to know I did do the broadcast at 9 a.m., 12 noon, Eastern, 11 Central, but when I did record it and look back at it, the sound was very uh, uh, scrambled. So what I had to do was go in and do some computer work uh, not very techy, but I had to go in and figure it out. So hopefully uh, we got it all set. We're we're back to 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 navigating on this. So we're here on Saturday, and I appreciate all of the comments that came from the uh, previous video about playing professional football and what the journey looks like from high school all the way up to the professional ranks. And some people said to me, "Well, why aren't you talking about basketball?" And so I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to talk about basketball today, even though I'm going to replay this again in uh, June 21st, because that's the day before the NBA draft. And even though the WNBA draft has already taken place, I still believe people need to understand the numbers and understand what it looks like going forward. If you or are a parent of a child who has aspirations of playing the prof in the professional sports, I just want you to realize that um, the journey is not one uh, for people who uh, don't understand what the journey looks like. You got to understand what the journey looks like. So today we're going to talk about what the numbers look like playing uh, high school, college, and being selected to play in the professional ranks of basketball. Now, I just want to say that uh, for all of those who, who want to pursue this conversation further, you can go to my website, that's www.rorytedwards.com, or you can send me an email at rorytedwards1 at gmail.com, and we can def definitely provide that initial consultation for you so that you'll have a better understanding of what it looks like. And also, you can go to my website, and you can get this book right here. Um, so you want to be a professional athlete. Uh, this is for parents, coaches, and um, uh, athletes to understand what that journey may look like. And for those individuals who are in high school and are looking at what it takes to become a college athlete, here's another journal that we put together. You can go to my website, www.rorytedwards.com. Uh, Rory T. Edwards, you see it right here, rorytedwards.com, and you can get that information. So let's get right to it today. Uh, the numbers. So there are about 900,000 plus uh, players in the America, in America, now we're just talking about America right now, in America who are playing uh, high school basketball. There's about 500,000 boys and about 400,000 girls. The one thing that we're not counting is those who are on travel teams. So we don't really know the full numbers of travel teams because we know the travel teams numbers change over time. And so we want to make sure that there's about uh, 900,000 high school registered individuals who are playing basketball, 500,000 boys and about 400,000 girls. So now after you complete that first four years phase of high school and you have uh, aspirations of going on to college, the numbers drop dramatically. For college, for men, there are about 18,816 playing at the college level. And for women, there's about 16,509. So let me tell you those numbers again. From high school to college, it goes down to 18,816 for men and about 16,509 for women. Now, after you complete your, your college journey, and you want to declare for the for the draft early or you do your four years and you want to declare for the draft the numbers go who are eligible for the draft the numbers go down dramatically again for men there's only 4181 players out of the 18000 that are eligible for the draft for the women there are 3669 women who are eligible for the draft out of the 16000 that are playing at the college level now, there is a combine for men, which is going to be taking place next month, May 18th, a wonderful day for it to be taking place, probably probably the most important day on the calendar in the year, and um, you just got to realize why I said it, May 18th, but 
there are only 76 men who have been invited out of the 4,181 who are eligible that are invited to participate in this NBA combine. Uh, with the WNBA, they did have a combine, but only 15 women out of the 3,669 women who are eligible, only 15 were invited to that combine. Really crazy, right? Now, let's talk about the draft. How many draft picks does the NBA have? The NBA only has 60 draft picks. Uh, last year, there were 52 selected from the American teams and eight players were selected internationally. So out of the 60 picks, eight were drafted internationally and 52 were selected from uh, American teams. So out of that 4,181, only 60, there's only 50, 60 drafted from that number. So you have to see that you have to be in the numbers. You have to really be in the numbers out of that. For the women, the eligibility, like I said, the eligible for the draft is 3,669. Like I said, 15 were invited to their combine, but there's only 36 players selected. There's three rounds of 12. And what the number says is many of those players who were even drafted don't make the teams. So there's only 36 selected, but they said out of those 36, a lot of those players never, ever play in the NBA and the WNBA. Um, now let's go back to the men total because, you know, we have people who come out of college and they don't make it to the NBA. So they go and play in the G League or they play internationally. And that total number comes out to 839. So there's totally there's, there's a total of 839 players who play in the G League and play internationally. And so if we take that number and we do the 52 that got selected and we do the 839, that equals 891 players. So out of the 891, we take take away 891 from 4,181. That still leaves 3,290 individuals who believed that they had the ability to play in the NBA or play professionally that don't ever make it again. What does that do to a person that now needs to go back into the world? What has that person been preparing for their whole life is to play professionally. Somebody has told them that you have the ability to play professionally. And that's why I say this thing right here is numbers don't lie, but people do. So now let's go to the women. The women internationally, there's about 233 that play. So with the 36 picks, plus the 233 that play internationally, that comes out to 259 players who play professionally. Uh, some players in WNBA go over and play internationally, so that's why the numbers are so small with women who are playing internationally. So out of the 3,692, only 259 ever play professional. So what does that leave? That leaves 3,441 players who have played at the college level women whose dreams are deferred. That's why I'm telling you, numbers don't lie, people do. And so we need to realize again, that if you have those particular dreams uh, and aspirations of playing at the professional level in sports, you need to understand the hard work, the dedication, the commitment to understanding how to keep yourself in the numbers. You have to keep yourself in the numbers because once the numbers, the higher the levels you go, the lower the numbers get and the numbers start to decrease. And so you have to realize that you can be something of a professional level in life because you're going to live life longer than you play sports. Uh, if you all have been watching the, the NFL draft, and I'm going to reflect the NFL draft and what happened yesterday. On Thursday, there was a young man who was supposed to be projected to be the first quarterback selected in the NFL draft from the University of Kentucky. He didn't even get selected in the first round. He was the second pick or third pick in the second round. And so if you look at his demeanor on the first day, when everybody was talking about he was the projected number one pick and he didn't get selected, and you look at his, his interview yesterday when he finally got selected, you can tell that he had lost a lot of steam and he said that it doesn't make a difference as long as he got drafted. He was going to show the other teams that um, he should not have been overlooked. 
Now, people may say, yeah, that's what you got to do. No, it's not what you got to do because you were told by everybody that you were going to be the number one pick. You see what I'm saying? Numbers don't lie. People do. It's something that happened that people saw that they didn't need to pick him in that first round, but they needed to pick him in the second round. And that's what happens to a lot of people. A lot of people are going into these particular drafts or they're going through their high school careers and their college careers and they're believing that they are better than they are. They haven't prepared a lot of times to be who they are, and they aren't prepared for the reality if their name is not called. See, one thing is going to happen is if you wake up in the morning, your name is going to be called. And so if you walk out the door every day, I would say try to be the biggest and best professional that you can be. If sports was not the end all dream for you, there is a plan for you. I want you to know that God has a plan for you. You just have to understand it. And everybody uh, who makes it may not be the person that everybody thought was going to make it. I've worked with some young men who were not on anyone's draft board, but during the time that they had to prepare to get ready, they proved to the teams that they were the right pick. And somebody whose name was supposed to be picked did not get picked. And so it's not that your dream can't be fulfilled, but you have to be prepared to fulfill it by putting in the work. You can't, you can't just have practice and then go home and not continue to practice. You have to put in the work so that you are the best prepared when it comes time to step on the court. And the other thing is for people who are selecting the college. This is what you need to look at right here. How to become a college athlete. So you want to become a college athlete. It's not where you go. It's not who selects you. It's who you select as a college that you want to go to. Because I tell people, you remember the movie The Fugitive with Wesley Snipes? They chased him all over the country. Right? But the one thing is that no matter where you go, if you're doing the work, they're going to find you. So it's not that you need to go to the power five school for you to be recognized. You may go to the power five school and sit on the bench every day and never get recognized. But if you go to a smaller school or uh, a division two school and you put the numbers in, they're going to find you. So I wanted you to write down those numbers because now we're going to do, we're going to talk about baseball. We're going to talk about soccer. We're going to talk about track and field. We're going to talk about all of the sports that most people say they want to reach the highest pinnacle in. But are they willing to put in the work? And the best thing for you to do is to understand how you fit into the numbers. All right. So hopefully with this uh, recording, it uh, actually recorded good sound and the information was very valuable to you. Please share this information. And once again, if you want to book your initial consultation, please go to www.rorytedwards.com. Uh, and uh, book your initial consultation because here at the Rory T. Edwards Group, we do have the ability to help you navigate not only your journey of becoming a professional athlete, but we also have the ability to help you navigate your uh, journey in becoming a professional person because you're going to be that a lot longer than you're going to play sports. All right. So I want you to uh, think about that, but definitely reach out to us. And I thank you for all of the comments and I hope you enjoyed this one as much. We're going to rebroadcast this on June 22nd because that's the day that the NBA draft will take place in the Barclays Center in New York. All right. So until we talk again, you be well. And uh, remember, numbers don't lie, but people do. I'll share.